Yeah. Mark Tankless, it's so good seeing you, man. You know, I remember your case uh, from so many years ago. I lived in Huntington. And uh, for folks who don't know about the case, just give me just a brief background so people can understand what brought us here today. Sure. So my name is Marty Tankliff, and in 1990, I was wrongfully convicted of the murder of my parents and sentenced to 50 years to life in Suffolk County, New York. So, you know, the case was, uh, it just was, he it was headlines and news day every day, the trial and everything. What was going through your mind as a young man during that period? As somebody who actually had faith in the system, I thought the system would work out. I didn't believe the system could actually convict an innocent person. But on June 28th, 1990, I learned the reality that after eight days of deliberations, the jury returned a verdict of guilty. You know, of, of all the years that you spent behind bars, when you first came home, what was the biggest adjustment you had to make? Uh, everything. There wasn't one thing that was difficult to adjust with. Uh, everything was new. I mean, I was in prison for 6,338 days. So everything was new from cost of products to travel to going back to college. I, you know, within weeks of my freedom, I was enrolled at Hofstra University. I was back in a college room classroom. And I think for me, the biggest challenge was is that in every class, I chose the seat closest to the door because I never thought I was going to be able to survive after being in prison for so long. How could I be in a college classroom with everybody who's half my age? But you know, I survived and I thrived and I went on to the law school and now I'm a lawyer and a professor. You know, uh, I, I followed the, uh, the Central Park case since 1989 and I saw how this, this particular community vilified these young men. And I was wondering if you experienced some of the same stuff back in your home on Long Island. With, without a doubt, I mean, there were people on Long Island who didn't really understand what was going on. Some people automatically believe law enforcement, but my family and friends who knew me and knew the truth believed in me and supported me throughout the years. The problem is in this adversity system or the criminal justice system or the injustice system, when you have prosecutors and detectives who are trained to lie, trained to present false evidence or withhold evidence, it becomes very challenging for jurors to understand the truth. And in my case, after almost 12 weeks of jury selection and trial and eight days of deliberations, they found me guilty. You know, I have to ask you finally about uh, how, what, what made you decide to become a lawyer and what was your experience like that led you to that decision? A after being wrongfully convicted, incarcerated for almost 18 years in prison, I made a conscientious decision that I did not want to see any more Marty Tankliffs. And if it could happen to me, I was a white young man, upper middle class, it could happen to anybody. And who better to represent people and advocate in the system than somebody like me who doesn't look like what people would automatically deem somebody who's wrongfully convicted of a crime. And I've been an attorney for almost two years now. I teach a class at Georgetown University where I've helped exonerate three people. I represent people all over this country because who better to represent somebody who's claiming they're innocent than somebody like me. Marty, thank you so very much for your time. I really appreciate it. It's so good seeing you out here with the uh, Exonerated Five. And man, again, thank you so very much for your time. Thank you for having me.